Dedo Banatang, the leading venture capitalist in Silicon Valley today. Wise, driven, and disciplined. Benatao left his family's farm to train as a commercial airline pilot at the Philippine Airlines. When he found no true design job in the Philippines after he graduated with a degree in electrical engineering at Mapua Institute of Technology. My name is Dado Benatao. I come from the north. My father was a farmer. I am an engineer. I grew up in a typical barrio in Cagayan Valley. Back then, there was no electricity, no telephones. I was taught math by moving bamboo sticks. There were no luxuries. Almost all of my classmates stopped going to school after sixth grade to help in the fields. But my father never asked me to help him. He wanted a better life for me. He made it clear his job was to keep food on the table. My job was to study. I went to high school far from my home. I felt inferior to the other students. They were from the city. I was the son of a farmer. When my friends played basketball, I studied. I fell in love with engineering. I wanted to build things. But when I graduated from Mapua, there were no design jobs for engineers in the Philippines. So, I moved to America. I applied for a master's in engineering at Stanford University. I was excited, but I was also so intimidated. Everyone seemed smarter than I was. So I studied twice as hard. I saw an opportunity to design better computer chips, and I started a company. That company failed. No one told me that I could do it. I had to tell myself that I could. And so I tried it again. This time, we succeeded. Silicon Valley has long been synonymous with the latest in tech innovations. And one of its best minds is a Filipino just Dado Dato Banatao. Hailed as the Philippines Bill Gates, his life story is an interesting and motivational rag to Rich's story. In this report, we will learn about his life, challenges, and success in his business and his characteristics attributed to his success. This is an overview of our discussion about the entrepreneur. First, who is Dato Banatao? His early life, his progression in life as an entrepreneur, his challenges, struggles encountered in the business and how the challenges were addressed and overcome. And lastly, his key traits of, that helped him overcome the challenges that was encountered in the business. So firstly, who is Dado? Who is he? Who is Dado Banatao? He is a Filipino-American entrepreneur working in the high-tech industry. So this is him. So what? What makes him special? The tech world has him to thank for two things that can be found in every personal computer you see today the PC chipset, and the Windows graphics accelerator, accelerator chips for PC. So after spending time at Silicon Valley in the 70s, he had his first breakthrough with Commodore International after he developed the first single chip, 16-bit microprocessor-based 
calculator. After Commodore, he then developed what would be his claim to fame, the world's first system logic chipset for IBM's PCXT and PCAT. He would later on develop the first Windows graphics accelerator chip for personal computers, which would forever cement his name in the world of PC. He would later be involved in three starts up, startups, so which would be forces to be reckoned with, reckoned with in the early 90s. Monstron, S3, Graphics as the most profitable company in the world in 1993, and Chips and Technologies, sold to Intel in 1996. He would later be involved uh, today Dado Banatao is the managing partner of Talwood Ventures Capital, a venture firm focused on semiconductor technologies, solutions for computing, communication, and consumer platforms. He is also the chair chairman of the board of directors for Infi, a company that specializes in advanced semiconductor and silicon photonic, photonics solutions. Seeing what education has done for him, he founded the Philippine Development Foundation, PhilDev, a non-profit organization that looks to eradicate poverty through education, innovation, and entrepreneurship. He also runs the Dado Banato Educational Foundation, a foundation that awards scholarship grants, scholarship, scholarship grants for five Filipino students students who show potential in the field of engineering and technology. But the man who would design what we see in every single PC did not start the way you would imagine. In his early life, just Dado Dato Banatao had the humbleness of beginnings that led him to where he is now. Born to a rice farmer, Salvador Banatao, and a housekeeper mother, Rosita Banatao, in the small town of Igig, Cagayan Valley on May 26, 1946. He studied in, uh, in Malabac Elementary School and pursued secondary education at a Jesuit-run Ateneo de Tugigarao. He grew up not having access to what people usually take for granted today, electricity, internet, and paved roads. Banatao is known for his rag to riches stories. Sorry, during his childhood, he walked barefoot on the dirt road just to reach Malabac Elementary School. He often felt like he was inferior, which instilled a desire to work harder than everyone else. He pursued his Bachelor of Science in Electrical Engineering from the Mapua Institute of Technology. He eventually graduated as cum laude, but he did not get his start in tech until much later. This was his pictures in his early life. So Dado is an electrical engineering alumnus of Mapuwa Institute of Technology. Before he could apply the knowledge in his chosen engineering field, he trained as a commercial airline pilot with Philippine Airlines when he found that there were there were no true design jobs in the Philippines. Along with this decision, he turned down job offers, including from Philippines' largest distributor of electrical power, Miralco, because of the low pay. Dad always wanted to be a pilot as a kid. So when Philippine Airlines said, we were looking for pilot trainees, he jumped at the chance. One year into his pilot training, he was offered a job at Boeing as a part of the team working on the 747. So at Boeing, he worked as a design engineer for the company's new commercial airline and cargo transport craft, Boeing 747, in the United States. With the opportunity to stay in the United States, he then took his Master's of Science in Electrical Engineering and Computer Science at Stanford University and finished in 1972. Banatao also joined the Homebrew Computer Club where he met Steve Jobs and Steve Wozniak. So, 
after finishing his master's degree, Banata worked with different technology companies such as National Semiconductor Intercell and Commodore International, where he designed the first single chip 18 bit microprocessor based calculator. And from then on, and from then on, more of his inventions were created. So this is Silicon Valley based in California. Thank you. Tado Banatao life story is not all about success. He also experienced a couple of failures before becoming what he is now. After he graduated, he moved to America since there were no design jobs for engineers in the Philippines. He became part of national company and assigned to the microprocessor group. During those days, the company don't understand computer science. He started from scratch and so it took him about 6 months to design or to code a microassembler because it is a microprogram. It was a microprogram and then an assembler which he derived from the microassembler. In result, they understood what software means in developing the chip which is a microprocessor. He was hired as the manager at Intersil. It is known that he had the hardest time with Sam Adir and Israeli because it was the hardest management task because of Adir's roughness. Though later on, they became good friends. At Intersil, they designed the CMOS version of the 8748 from scratch where he did the entire logic design and they had to have to size every transistor. Also, there was this computer service called ISD. He spent the first three months writing the assembler because it won't work if it doesn't have a basic stimulator. The ISD was iterated many times. Though they spent so many months working for the chip, but in a point of view of investing in the future, the company was not interested. It's like they wanted to move on and they all got frustrated and that's when they started looking at alternatives to what they should do. They actually did try to get management to commit to the follow-up, but it looks like at that point they didn't want to invest any more money. They wanted to be bought by another company, which eventually happened. And that's when they moved to Synertech. What attracted them is that they get to design their own, but then they got caught up into selling again. So in the end, they never did what they wanted to do. And because he had ambitions to do some new things, so later on he moved to SSEQ, where this company contributed a lot to his first startup. At SEEQ, he began to understand how small computers eventually will work and be capable at 3Com. It was a very successful chip. In fact, SEEQ was losing money until these designs came out. But according to him, it was a good experience and gave him the confidence to leave and start his own company. He grabbed the opportunity that was given to him to be a design engineer, and he was able to design a chip. Six years later, as a design engineer, he started his first company. It was in 1984 when the high technology company, Mostron, was put up by Dado along with his business partner, Francis Shu. Both started with a half a million US dollars capital to launch a manufacturer of motherboards. He founded three technology companies, Mostron, Chips and Technologies, and S3. According to him, Mostron was a failure because it wasn't funded well, so they ran out of money. Mostron ran out of money but the chipset became the heart of his next startup, Chips and Technologies with Gordon Campbell. With the same idea and starting from scratch again, he improved the second company and offered it to the public. And this is the beginning of his successful rise in the computing world. He studied the PC inside out and when he faced challenges, he didn't give up. The more difficult the problems, the more they stay in their office and labs on the design solutions. So they started chips with 1 million. They ran out of money around the time that the chips were still in production, meaning being fabricated. So they go to raise money. They were using their own money, the founders and some friends, to pay salaries. So early on chips and technologies had the advantage of knowing and learning an entire code 
and understanding that semiconductor companies really did not care much about software, which is the advantage of chips and technologies. Benetau also traveled the world to see what's happening and talk to real customers. Some of them thinks that these guys will never make it. Benetau and his team needed to make a graphics using an API, Application Programming Interface, to solve the graphics bottleneck in the PC. So, he had an argument with Dell, not accepting his design but he actually still went ahead with API. They needed to get away from this register level compatibility and make it API because it probably would not work anyway even if they have all those performance. So he challenged himself and to some degree the whole industry. Later on, he found himself thinking that he doesn't have to prove himself anymore as an entrepreneur and got tired on computing. Eventually, he departed being an entrepreneur and focused on communications and investments. Dado Benetau also invested in Marvel, Newport Communications, and Cyrus. Marvel was a combination of both networking and hard disk read channels. So for all intents and purposes, Marvel started out as a communications company, but they came out with the read channel and the preamp first. That was successful, and then they quickly followed it with a 100 and a gigabyte Ethernet. So during the Anvil Business Summit 2016, organized by the Association of Young Filipino Chinese Entrepreneurs at Marriott Hotel Manila in Pasay City, Benetau said a lot of failures in startups are simply because they miss the market requirements and they come up with products only to realize that no one will buy it. And so, he also cites the importance of innovation in growing a company and the economy. I'll be reporting about how did Dado Panatang overcome his challenges throughout his business. According to Dado Panatang, Monstrum, his first founding company, was doomed to fail. It is not because they do not have ideas, but it is because they do not have funds for their researches. So, Dado Banatao was not disappointed or did not stop on doing what he wanted. But he co-founded a company called Chips and Technologies by the founder Campbell. So, using the funds that was invested on him, Dado Banatao built an IBM system or a logic chipset called PCXT and PCAT and was developed which got them a profit of $12 million in just four months. So the company went into public for just two years. Chips and technology is more than an enhanced graphic adapter <coughs> that is used for IBM motherboards. <coughs> So after two companies, so Dado Banatang founded S3 Graphics or known as <coughs> S3 Graphics LTD, bought by joint partnership by Via Technologies and now owned by HTC Corporation. So S3 Graphics was sold for 300 million to Intel. So S3 Graphics, so it is a 3D graphics card like NVIDIA which enhanced a game using 3D games, and now used for eSports games. And using the, the, the 300 million, Dado Banatao used this as a capital to establish Tollwood. So Tollwood Capital now is a venture capital that is a firm focused on semiconductors solution for computing, communication, and consumer platforms. <clears throat> After then, he is also the chairman of the board of directors for INFI, a company that specializes in advanced semiconductor and silicon photonics solution. So in 2010, Banatao became Econos Communications CEO after Michael Gullet resigned as the company CEO and president. Seeing what education has done for him, he founded 
the Philippine Development Foundation or PhilDef or ERDT. So it is a non-profit organization that looks to eradicate poverty through education, innovation, and entrepreneurship. So he also runs the Dado Banatao and Educational Foundation. So a foundation that awards a scholarship that grants to five Filipino students who shows potential in the fields of engineering and technology. So Tado Banatao uses every opportunity by innovating technologies and selling his company for greater good of new opportunities. So the question is, what are Dado Banatao's award on helping and becoming a business entrepreneur and how did he become a philanthropist? So a philanthropist is a person who donates time, money, experience, skills, or talents to help create a better world. So anyone can be a philanthropist just by helping others or usually a philanthropist uses his money, not the company's money. So back to the topic, what are his awards? So in the year 1993, he was awarded Asian Leadership Award by Asian Business League of San Francisco. And in 1997, he was awarded Pamana ng Filipino Award by President Fidel V. Ramos and Master Entrepreneur of the Year Award by Ernest and Young Incorporated Magazine and Mira Business Financial Services. In 2011, he was awarded Kalampusan Award, Search to Involve Filipino Americans. So, he was recognized by National Ethnic Coalition of Organization Incorporated. So, he, he, he was recognized with Ellis Island Medal of Honor. So, in For, Forbes Medes, Liz was recognized six times so in in 2002 he was ranked 49 out of 100 and in 2003 he was ranked 68 out of 100 in 2004 he was ranked 58 out of 100 in 2005 he was ranked 42 out of 100 and in 2006 he was ranked 91 out of 100 and Lastly, he was recognized by Mindanao State University with a recognition of Doctor of Technology in 2009. So other recognitions of Dado Banatao. So for his contribution to the U.S., Banato has also received the prestigious Ellis Island Medal of Honor Award to exemplary U.S. citizens. So the Philippine government has also recognized Banato notably by naming him the country's first special envoy of science and technology. So outside the foundation, he spends $400,000 a year on a college course of 1,000 students and has helped fund the construction of, of hundreds of houses, mostly in the southern end of the country where he is from with habitat from humanity Philippines so by first Asian noted so he is he has contributed hundreds of thousands of dollars to relief funds after devastating typhoons in the last three years the magazine added then Six years later, after taking up his master's degree in Stanford, Manatao started his first company that unfortunately failed because of insufficient funds. But beyond his failure in his first attempt, Dado only came out stronger and wiser for his second one. From the same idea and starting from scratch, he built his second company, offering it to the public, 
He studied the PC inside out, and when he faced challenges, he didn't give up. His team became even more driven to perfect their innovation. Benatao encouraged students to study reverse engineering as well as do some designs and challenge themselves to do something new. Most of all, he emphasized that they should not give up. There will always be challenges in life, and it is either you give up or challenge yourself, and if you do, you are done. In the startup of his first company, Benatao had the perfect man to be in his team. They were rich in ideas and innovations, however, they were poor in terms of funds, that there was a time that they used their personal money to give salaries to their employees. However, this major setback that led his company to failure wasn't enough reason for him not to try again. Manatao is a risk taker. He is determined, persevering in terms of learning, and a critical thinker. He educated himself further with the things he needed to know. But the most important factor that led him to success is by being grounded. Benatao always looked back to his roots, to where he came from. He isn't the Philippines' Bill Gates. Diostado Benatao is the son of a disciplinarian, of a farmer, and he is also a son of a father that termed success for his child no matter how hard life could be. He believed that innovation is one way to end poverty. My family was poor but only because I trained myself, I can do these things today. I think that that is a lesson for all of us, he says. I am not so special, but I am determined. My story could be your story. As Filipinos, it must be our story.